Right, hi guys, and welcome back to the Oversteer Network and of course the Crawl Wall from the Russian Grand Prix. Now, before we begin, of course, I did have a massive rant lined up about the Mercedes thing that kicked off with Hamilton getting ahead of Bottas uh, via team orders, of course, and I even had a rolling pin and some Vaseline to uh, demonstrate how much Bottas was shafted by Mercedes this race weekend, but I decided against it, and that's mainly because... To be honest with you, I was just disappointed after the race today. I really was. It was just disappointment, and it wasn't in a way that I wanted to make fun of it, or I thought, you know what, this would be funny if I did this. I tried thinking about funny ways, and I just thought, you know what, my heart's not in it. I'm not going to do it. And that is genuinely because, as an F1 fan, I was left absolutely... I'm just disappointed, is really all I can say. It's totally unscripted, this bit, because I didn't know what I was going to say, and just disappointment it really sums it up. It really does. And it's not because I hate Mercedes, and it's not because I hate Hamilton, but it's just because Bottas did everything right this weekend, there wasn't any threat from Ferrari like Mercedes made out there was. There wasn't any of this as if like Hamilton was close to Vettel in the championship. He'd already got a 40 point cushion. He wasn't under direct threat, even if Vettel did get past Hamilton. But they did it anyway, just because Hamilton is the blessed one. And it's just utter Anyway, we're going to kick things off with Hamilton and Bottas, and I'm not even going to bother going into the races because you already know what happened. Uh, the pair of them are disqualified from the cruel wall. It's as simple as that, because at the end of the day, Hamilton says, oh, I really feel for Valtteri. Yeah, oh, I'm such a shame he drove a great race and everything. I'm sorry, but he let you pass on lap 27. You had the rest of the race to re let him re-overtake you had you felt it wasn't right. Or had you then realised that the team weren't going to allow them to re-overtake you, if that makes sense. So you could have done something about it, but you decided, no, I'll take the points and then go, oh, no, I feel so sorry for Valtteri afterwards. I just fuck off. Just f I'm not interested. Really not interested. And as for Valtteri Bottas, the reason why he's getting uh, disqualified is because... He's just a bitch. He's just the team bitch now. And he could have easily turned around and said, I'll only let him pass if you let me re-overtake him. Or I'll only, you know, if I don't get overtaken by Vettel, of course. Or, you know, I know I'm not doing it. And yeah, it would have been, yeah, he'd have been told off and everyone had, he'd have got a black mark against his name at Mercedes. But the, a lot more fans would have respected him. Let's not forget, Max Verstappen, a couple of years back in Toro Rosso at Singapore, refused to let Carlos Sainz through and buy, and he was hailed a hero for it. They've done it in the past at Hungary, where Hamilton re-allowed Bottas to overtake him at the end of the race, on the last lap. It's been done before, but this time they all elected no, we'll keep it in position just to favour Hamilton. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't a threat to the Constructors' Championship at all. They were getting 43 points that weekend, no matter which way those cars round. So, in the end, they're both disqualified. Next up, we have uh, Sebastian Vettel, of course, finishing P3. And he was magnificent in defeat, it must be said. Um, he drove a fairly good race. A great strategy by Ferrari to try and allow him to get ahead of, um, of course, Hamilton, which he did do. But then a small mistake in, 12, in turn 12, turn 13, allowed him then to get a run on the straight and re-overtake him eventually. So, he, tr he tried his best, but Ferrari really didn't deliver this weekend. 50 points the gap now to Hamilton as a result of Bottas being the bitch. And uh, yeah, Vettel, what can we say? Championship's over now, but he's just going to focus on trying to end the season well and trying to end it on some wins and hopefully some more podiums and just finish the season off strong and try again next year because that's all you can do. So for Sebastian Vettel, wasn't the best race, wasn't the greatest race by him, but he was consistent and he started third and he finished third. So for that reason, I'm going to score him eight points. Next up is Kimi Raikkonen, uh, starting P4, finishing P4, and yeah, struggled really this weekend, didn't have the measure of his teammate, but all in all, an average race weekend. As we said, Ferrari really didn't have the pace, so Raikkonen was never going to be able to deliver anyway, and then he was never going to be able to finish ahead of Vettel, because again, Finnish drivers are the number two bitches in the teams. So for that reason, Kimi Raikkonen, I'm going to score him seven points. I think it was an okay race, a decent race, and uh, yeah. All in all, not bad. Next up, Max Verstappen, my driver of the day and everyone else's driver of the day. In seven laps, he got up from 19th to 7th, was it? It was crazy. He did an absolutely mighty job. Yes, I'm aware he's got a faster car than the most cars around him, but he had to fight for those positions and he positioned his car perfectly. He got through the pack, Ricardo didn't. 
Okay, Ricardo had a bit of damage, but even so, the way that Verstappen drove in that race was absolutely magnificent. Drive of the day for me, like I said, and he's recovering and he's proving himself well compared to what he did at the start. Had he not had such a bad start to the season, he could have really been in contention of leading this Cruel Wall series. But, you know, instead, it wasn't to be. He drove like a Wally at the start, so that's that. But this weekend, he delivered absolutely astoundingly. It drove perfectly, never put a wheel wrong. Fantastic effort. 12 points on the board for Max Verstappen. That was a that was an impressive drive. That was a brilliant drive. I don't care if it was a Red Bull. That was a very good drive indeed. Next up, we have Daniel Ricciardo also in the Red Bull. And like we said, didn't get through the pack as well as Verstappen did. He did have some front wing damage and had to change his wing when he did finally make a pit stop. But fifth and sixth was what they were really only going to get anyway. He did finish about 30 seconds behind his teammate, which is in the reflection to not getting through the pack as quickly. Uh, but yeah, just didn't have the edge of his teammate this weekend. Uh, I think he'd have finished behind Verstappen anyway, despite the damage. So, yeah, it, a good weekend all in all, a good recovery drive, um, but nowhere near as impressive as uh, Verstappen for me. So for that reason, it's going to be... Oh, what do I go for here? I'm going to go eight points. Eight points, I think, for Ricardo. That was decent, but it can't be a perfect ten because Verstappen was something else. Next up, we have Charles Leclerc, fastest of the B teams. Fantastic effort, qualified seventh, ran round in fifth, an amazing move round uh, the outside of Kevin Magnussen, and a great, great drive, and there he goes, he finishes seventh place. Brilliant stuff. Six points on the board for Sauber. I believe that elevates him above Toro Rosso now, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but they've certainly closed the gap. And uh, yeah, an impressive, impressive race by Leclerc, and... He's signed for Ferrari and it's only made him stronger, so I'm really, really chuffed for him. So, Charles Leclerc is going to get a full 10 points on this board. An impressive drive indeed. Then we come to Kevin Magnussen finishing P8. Uh, drove an okay race and yeah, he got through into Q3, but so did a lot of others that really shouldn't have been there, but that was as a result of the tyres and things in qualifying, which was just a bit of a mess and the penalties, of course. Magnussen qualified in fifth, of course, the fastest of the B teams in that particular race. And this in the race overall, apart from losing out to the Red Bulls, he also lost out to Charles Leclerc. So a little bit of unfortunate there. Did a great job to hold back the two Force Indias, though, of course. And uh, yeah, he did deserve the points that he got today, finishing eighth place. And yeah, a great, great effort by Magnussen. Um, but yeah, did get beaten by Leclerc. So for that reason, Kevin Magnussen, I'm going to score you. You are there on the board. I'm going to score you. Eight points. I think that's a decent effort by him indeed. Good qualifying, a strong race, but just allowed Leclerc through. So there you go. In a B-team battle, it's crucial. Those points could be crucial. Next up, we have the two Force Indias of Ocon and Perez. And yeah, Ocon finishing ahead of Perez. Some great teamwork, some great uh, team radio transmissions as well regarding, obviously, you need to push Ocon. You get three laps at it. If not, Perez gets three laps and then you have to release... And then once Ulkenberg pitched, you swap your positions back again. It was great, and they did obey it, and obviously that was all brought in as a result of the mess that was Singapore for them. And uh, yeah, all in all, a not bad weekend for them. Ocon did a solid job qualifying sixth. Perez qualified eighth, I think it was, so both inside the top ten. And uh, yeah, of course, that was, as, again, as a part of all the uh, rules and regulations and things with the uh, penalties and whatnot, so... In a certain way, they were slightly hindered by that because they could have done what Renault did and didn't elect to pit. But in the long run, looking at what happened to Renault, he didn't really benefit them. So a good result, a strong result. A double points finishes again, back on the board for Force India team, picking up three points. So for Esteban Ocon, I will score him nine points. And for Sergio Perez, eight points. There's a lot of eights going about, isn't there? Indeed. Next up, we have Roman Grosjean missing out on the points by a solitary position. And uh, yeah, I believe he qualified ninth and then in the race just didn't really get it together. Um, what can we say? He did an okay race. Points, were, he was struggling for him. He was scrapping around the back, back half there with uh, the likes of Ericsson. It just didn't come together for him, really. A lonely race, it seems. Um, Grosjean's already out of it in terms of the cruel wall. As signed, of course, for Haas for next year, so that'll be a confidence boost for him. So it'll be it'll be a bit miffed that he didn't get a point this weekend. 
but just didn't really happen. He did uh, overtake Hulkenberg in the latter stages as well to get that 11th place, but it wasn't for points, so it didn't really matter. So Grosjean, I'm going to score him five points. I think it was an average race by him. An okay qualifying, but was out qualified by K-Mag and then out raced by K-Mag and no points, whereas he got four. So then we come to Nico Hulkenberg and I wore a new shirt this weekend to try and support him and it didn't happen, did it? Nothing happened for him. Of course, Hulkenberg didn't qualify in Q2 because he was going to start 11th and 12th anyway, the two Renaults. So they elected not to bother, have a free choice of tyres, which was a good move initially. Running around in 7th for quite a while on those soft tyres. It looked as though it were going to be coming out in between the Force India Haas scrap. But it wasn't to be. It came out slightly behind on the Ultra Softs, but then just couldn't make the Ultra Softs work and couldn't get pace in the tyre. So he slipped behind Grosjean and that was that really. A, a bit of a poor weekend for Renault, who I'm sure we're expecting a lot, lot more than that. And I'm sure Hulkenberg was expecting more as well. So for that reason, Nico Hulkenberg, I'm going to score him six points. Wasn't all his fault, of course, the tyres let him down, but not an impressive weekend overall. Uh, deciding not to qualify might have cost you in the end. Next up, we have Marcus Ericsson, of course, the second of the Saubers, really outshone by uh, Leclerc this weekend. Of course, Ericsson did make it through into Q3 as a result of those penalties as we keep going on about with the engines. And uh, yeah, Ericsson, did okay in the race, was running around in 10th, did an okay job at overtaking uh, Grosjean at one point to get back into that 10th position. And then he just sort of uh, faded away really, of course, the Red Bulls got past him. And it was, it was always going to push him out the points and it did in the end, unfortunately. So his first Q3 effort since, um, I think it was Monza 2015, it's been over three seasons anyway, or certainly into the third season. Uh, but yeah, a solid, solid effort by Marcus Ericsson in that respect. As I mentioned, of course, it was all due to those penalties. So, Ericsson, an okay race. I'm going to score him a middle of the road, five points. Next up, we had Fernando Alonso running around in 14th. Started at the back as a result of McLaren penalties, of course. And what can be said, really? I, I don't know. Just a lonely race again. Didn't really put much effort into it. And the race itself didn't really encourage any kind of overtaking or anything after the early stages. It's the circuit itself that he struggles with. Um, even the DRS doesn't help. And Alonso just didn't benefit. Uh, he was asked on the radio, you know, to make sure you keep fighting for position. The back marker, you know, you're getting lapped, but keep pushing. And he said, I'm racing around in 15th. I'm not really interested. So in the end, he finished 14th. And yeah, what can we say? It was an okay race. So Fernando Alonso, I'm going to score him six points. It was all right. He finished ahead of his teammate, couldn't qualify. And yeah, that was that. Oh, well. As you can see, I'm not really asked because I'm still disappointed about the uh, whole thing that kicked off at the front of the grid. But there you go. Then we have Lance Stroll after Fernando Alonso. And what can we say about the Williams? They both got knocked out in Q1, unsurprisingly. Uh, the pace wasn't there this weekend. But Stroll did a good job, in fairness, to finish ahead of Van Dorn, Sainz. So... And of course his teammate. So he did a good, good job in that sense. He finished ahead of a couple of cars there that he shouldn't have finished ahead of. And uh, credit where credit's due, Stroll's had a good couple of races these past few races. So, short and sweet, Lance Stroll gets seven points, I think. Decent job. Decent job. Next up, we have Stoffel van Dorn. Uncertain future in Formula One now. He's leaving. And what can be said about van Dorn? I don't really know. He just, he just never turns up, does he? I think he's obviously lost all sort of concentration now and is focusing on his career rather than race by race looks like his formula rebound so that could be a positive for him but this race it just didn't turn up so it's going to be three points for Stoffel van Dorn then we come to Carlos Sainz who rather sillily let uh, van Dorn through on the closing stages while being lapped by the Mercedes cars and yeah it was a bit of a silly error that but also he struggled with the tyres he uh he stayed out for quite a while on the soft tyres and, uh, of course, he got pushed wide by Magnussen, which dropped him down the order, but he was already behind Ulkenberg anyway. And then he pitted for the ultra soft tyres and they just didn't work. They just didn't work on that Renault at all, so a silly, silly error in that respect. Obviously, the temperatures were different to what they tested him in. Who knows? But for some reason, he didn't turn up this weekend and neither did Renault. So for that reason, it's going to be just... Two points for Carlos Sainz. There was nothing there that impressed me whatsoever. And then the last of the finishers was Sergei Sorokin. 
a quiet homegrown prey for him, it must be said. He kept himself out of trouble though, which is always a positive. Uh, didn't make a fool of himself. And yeah, but finished last of the finishers, which is a bit of a shame. And was outraced by Stroll. So for that reason, Sergei Sorokin, I'm going to score you four points. He's had a good run of points recently. Four points isn't his best. But Sergei did okay. Then we come to the two retirements, which was Pierre Gasly and Brendan Hartley. And what can we say about them? They'd had some new engines, so they're starting at the back anyway, so it was pointless qualifying. Uh, I think they did qualify, though. Gasly got through into Q2 and then elected not to go through. I think Hartley was knocked out anyway, but it doesn't matter. They just did some laps just to show that they're within 107% and then parked it. And then the race itself, both out on lap six with brake issues, it seems. Uh, Gasly lost his front brake, so his rear's just locked up and off his spun, and Hartley had a similar problem as well. So that was that. And what can we say for that? Well, you know what we do for retirements normally when it's not the driver's fault. It's five points and five points. And there we go. That is that. Uh, there's no Palmer of the Week this week. As I said, we've had two disqualifications, so that's more than enough for any man, I'm sure. Uh, apologies for this video being a bit mundane and a bit flat, but I've just got no energy in me. After, that, after watching that race back, disappointing. Really, really disappointing. I know team orders have been in the sport for quite a while now, and they've re-allowed them after banning them because of the whole Ferrari debacle that happened many years ago with Schumacher. But all I'm going to say to this is, to the Hamilton fans that get really annoyed when the likes of Ferrari do the team orders to favour Vettel and you hate it and you don't disagree with it and you start deciding that you're going to spout off at Ferrari for it but then when Mercedes do it you're like oh that's not cool but really you don't give a shit because you like Hamilton that's an issue that is a massive issue you either like team orders or you don't you can't like them just because it suits your driver and not the other one and not the other way around it's utter bollocks and for me it just really really ruins the race Bottas should have won that. If Hamilton had have attacked him and overtook him fairly, then yeah, that's all well and good. But in a race where they didn't need to do team orders, they did them anyway and came up with some excuse that Hamilton's tyres were blistering. I don't buy it. I really don't buy it at all. So there you go. That was team orders and whether I like them or not. And yeah, there you go. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and much love.